Guys, we are currently living in some very interesting times with regard to how Android looks. Not only has Samsung with One UI 7 and now the One UI 8 beta pretty radically changed the way that their flavor of Android looks, Google is now doing the same with Material 3 Expressive. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take my Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra running One UI 8 beta number one, and we're gonna take my Pixel 9 Pro Fold, which is running Android 16 QPR1 beta one, and we're gonna compare the way that these two devices now look because wow, have they changed a lot. So first off, we're just looking at the always on display. I love what Samsung is doing here. I think that this might be something that they ripped from iPhones. I'm not a big iOS guy, so I don't actually know for sure who did this first. But the fact that you can see the wallpaper, I really, really like that look. We don't have anything like that to my knowledge on these Pixel devices. If you double tap the screen, of course, it's gonna wake up. And I did try to make these match by using the same wallpaper. If we swipe up and we see the uh, the pin screen, where you can actually enter your pin, you can see some big differences here as well in the way that they're going about this. Kind of interesting, like Samsung has always been the phone or the OEM that likes to bring everything down to make it easier to reach, but here it looks like Google is actually a bit easier to reach. Let's see if we get different animations on either one of these, how these things actually unlock. That's what that looks like. Once we get to our home screen, things are fairly different. You do have a bit more freedom with these Samsung devices. Like over here, you can't get rid of that search bar at the bottom. As you can see, I do like having the search bar, so I end up putting it there anyways. You also have the at a glance widget up here on these Google devices, which I find actually to be fairly useful, but again, you can't remove it. With Material 3 Expressive though, they have at least moved it up a little bit and that has given you an additional row of, uh, of icons that you can actually take advantage of now. So it's a bit better. I do wish that they would give you the freedom to remove both of these things though. If we start looking at our quick settings though, things actually change quite a bit. And the first way is that on these Pixel devices currently, no matter where you swipe, this is what you're going to get. Whereas on these Samsung devices, a swipe on the right is going to get you your quick settings and a swipe on the left is going to get you your notifications. They have actually separated these two things. Now, like I've actually told you guys in some other content, you can actually change this. You can go into panel settings and make them be together. And that is very much how I'm going to prefer it to be. So that now you get this and this is very much more familiar, much more like what we have seen in the past. I want to quickly address one more thing. This is, I think, a problem with this One UI 8 beta. You can see that the theming colors are off, like this should be pink, like it is over here. And for some reason, what's happening here, if you jump into the wallpaper and style and go to color palette, wallpaper colors, it's not like picking the right one. So I guess that would probably be a lot closer, but it didn't grab that automatically. It didn't go to it. I don't know if that's a bug or what's going on, but we at least now match a little bit more closely. Looking at these quick settings icons up here at the top, very, very different ways of going about this. If we swipe down twice, you can see Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and then you've got your actual quick settings here, which are sort of the equivalent of some of these. Then you have your brightness and your speaker, your volume and several other things, very different. This is again, kind of iPhone-like in a way. And you can of course click on the edit button. And what's cool is you can actually move all of this stuff around. You can reorder it and that's really, really cool. And then of course you can change your individual quick settings. Over here on the Pixel, we are finally getting much more flexibility. Not only can you quickly add and remove different icons, you can actually resize them as well. You can see that I've got mine set up where I've got small and then large on the right, but you can do whatever you want to do. Make these whatever size you need them to be. So both are getting more customizable. Maybe you could say that in some ways, this is even more customizable and it's definitely taking up more of the screen. Like we're not using all of this screen real estate because maybe we could add volume control in there. They've got home control as a default thing. They've got modes, smart screen, nearby devices. Maybe you don't want all that. You have to decide which one of these you think looks better. But I do think that they're both improvements over what they used to be. And I like them both quite a bit. Let me point out really quickly that on the Pixel device, if you want it to take up more of this available space, you can do that. You can click on that edit button and just add more things and then maybe even expand some things out and that's gonna cause it to take up more space as well. And before you know it, you could effectively fill up a similar amount of space. Now you get to this point and you will start scrolling. So you can't really ever use 
all of the available space, but you can at least use more than I was using. Excuse me now as I get rid of all of this nonsense that I just cluttered up my quick settings with. I almost forgot to mention the differences in the actual home screen settings because both of these devices can do quite a bit. Let's actually take both of these out of dark mode. I think it'll be easier to film in a lighter look. Samsung just sort of steps out here. You can do quite a bit. Widget labels, app labels, the actual app sizes. You have your folder grids. Lots and lots and lots of different settings, whereas on the Google phones, very, very few settings that you can actually change here. The grid stuff is in the wallpaper and style section instead, and you can change the grid a little bit, but not a whole heck of a lot at all, really. Apparently, just these two options are really all we kind of have at this point. So Samsung, much more customizable when it comes to that home screen. When it comes to notifications, there are some differences here as well. These are both silent notifications. For whatever reason, it's automatically expanded on the Pixel, and I have to expand it on the Samsung phone. If I send myself an email here, similar thing. It's already expanded here. It's shrunk down here. And notice how the silent notifications are in their own dedicated section, whereas over here, they're all just kind of lumped together. There are also some cool things that Google is doing with animations that might be hard to see here, but as you swipe one away, it almost feels like it's sticky. And then it gets to a certain spot and then it snaps itself free and then is able to be dismissed. I really like that kind of stuff, these little fine touches, nothing like that going, going on over here on the Samsung device. If we swipe up and hold to get into our recents, there are some similarities, but also some pretty big differences. Just the way that they're going about this does look fairly different. And there are some differences in terms of the actual features that are available there, but they're both using a soft blur of the background that looks remarkably similar. Notice that Google has changed this, this little option that gives you some other things you can do like screenshots and select and split screen. That is definitely a different way to sort of get into it, but you're gonna get there just the same either way. I do wish that Google would put a close all button right front and center so they don't have to scroll all the way over to the end to close all. They both do have relatively new weather applications and you can see very different approaches to both of these. New animation of this person sort of walking around here. AI weather report, a drizzly afternoon will give way to a comfortably mild evening. And I hope so because it's been raining for, it feels like six months straight over here in Knoxville. I honestly think that both of these are pretty darn solid weather applications. They both have a weather map. They both have a lot of the same or similar features. This videos section at the bottom, I think is a little bit superfluous, but for the most part, pretty solid on both sides. And notice this, notice the animations here. Let's give credit where it's due. They're doing a very similar thing here, sort of returning into their widget. I love stuff like that. Nice touches on both. If we jump into our wallpapers and style section on both of these devices. So on the Samsung device, you have your lock screen and your home screen. You can click on change wallpapers and see several different options like create with AI, featured, you have your gallery there, and then several different sort of built-in little things that you can do. And and you can also choose your color palette, which I showed you just a moment ago. Over here, same thing, home screen and lock screen. You should have your recently set wallpapers down here, but for some reason it's only showing these like system wallpapers. I think that might be a bug. Colors, and then a few other things as well, like icons. You can actually theme them, which is something you can do over here as well. Apply a palette to your icons. I think both of those features feel a bit incomplete to me, but they are there. If we actually click on the lock screen on both of these, you can see some of the customization that can be done. You can definitely do a lot of customization on these Samsung devices. Let's see how this works on both of these because I actually just discovered that they both have a very similar feature. Over here, you can do this effect where it sort of cuts out the photo, tries to find the focal point there, as you can see over here. Frame is going to do a very similar thing, and you can sort of zoom them in and move them around and get them exactly where you want them to be. As you can see, Samsung is making this, I think, probably a little bit better, a little bit more customizable than we have over here on the Pixel device. It's the same kind of general idea, but just maybe not executed quite as well. And of course, over here, that heart is by default kind of going off the screen, but we do have other different ones that you can do. Let's just go with that heart and we'll kind of zoom it in there. And we're going to go with the cookie shape and we're going to go with this pink color and make it really obnoxious. 
And if we click on done on both of these, I'll show you how this is actually going to work on both. What you'll get is something like this, where you have on both of these, this little lock screen. If I unlock, that's what you're gonna get here. Over here, you're gonna kind of zoom in and, and zoom into that photo. So again, slightly different ways to go about this. But Google actually does have some other effects, like how about a weather effect? It'll show your local weather, or you can just set it to be certain weather, whatever you want it to be, but it can show your, your actual weather. There's a cinematic option here, which will add 3D motion to the photo. So, you know, for years and years, you would just say that Samsung has the most customizable, you know, lock screen. But now I, I don't know that that's completely true anymore. Google seems like they're catching up. You can see how that works now, sort of moving around. If, if you move the phone around, it kind of gets this like parallax effect. Now, of course, one thing that Google does not have is something like GoodLock and a module like the LockStar module, which will allow you to do a ton more to customize your lock screen. So maybe it's fair to say that Google is catching up when it comes to the stock capabilities. But once you install a utility like Lockstar that allows you to put literally any widget you want on your lock screen, as well as some other things, you can see sort of a pop-up there of all of the different things that you can kind of quickly do on your lock screen. Probably not as true anymore. This is slightly boring, but if you jump into your system settings, I give you a look at how both of these look as well. Not only are they organized differently, they do look fairly different as well. Just a different style. These icons are very Samsung, and these icons are very Google. But again, I'll just sort of scroll through both of these, and you can just get a look at how these are organized. Like I said, they are definitely organized a little bit differently, and that's just something that you're going to have to get used to one phone to the other. And I do also want to show you guys the battery icons. I know that it's become sort of like a controversial thing. Here is the one for the Samsung device. If my phone will focus, that is how readable, legible that is. And here we have the new icon on the Pixel device, which has a sort of bolder, darker color font there front and center, which I think does probably make it a little bit easier to read. Let's jump over to light mode on both of these and we'll see if that changes anything it doesn't seem like that's had any real effect as far as i can tell at all but i will quickly also show you those quick settings again just so that you can see how those two differ i think that this all kind of serves to underscore what makes android great android can be pixel android can be samsung android can be Oppo or OnePlus or many, many other things. It's actually funny. I've seen a lot of complaints about the One UI 7 update. A lot of things changed. There have been some bugs. A lot of people complain about battery drain, which I'm actually suspicious how much of that battery drain is actually the Instagram app that was apparently causing a lot of problems. That's neither here nor there. Could have been the uh, the One UI 7 update for all I know. But what's funny is how many people I've seen on social media saying this new Android update is terrible. And then you look at the comments and they were talking about a Samsung One UI 7 update, not an Android update, so to speak. But again, that's the beauty of Android. It can be absolutely anything. It can look one way or it can look a completely different way. And in this instance, Pixel versus a galaxy quite a few differences let me know in the comments down below which sort of style you think looks better of course keep in mind this is completely subjective there are no right and wrong answers there are only opinions thanks for watching subscribe for more content like this and until next time stay nerdy my friends